Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Thank you, good buddy. Guys, uh, I saw something really weird, kind of freaked me out the other day. It's behind a car in traffic. It's just had a bumper sticker on it. It's a paw print of a dog. It just said, what happens in the dog park stays <laughs> in the dog park. <laughs> It's like, that's a weird way to confess you fucked your dog. <laughs> In a public park, too? <laughs> it's that dumb Las Vegas slogan, too. We keep using it everywhere now. I heard it in the grocery store. The guy came on the intercom, he goes, head over to the candy aisle for half off all items, because what happens in the candy aisle stays in the candy aisle. That just sounds like there's a pedophile in the candy aisle. Right? It freaked me out, man. People freak me out really easily. This, this creeped me out the other day. I was just walking down the street. Have you? And I saw this guy coming down the other way. Have you ever seen somebody walk without swaying their arms? Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it's very menacing. <laughs> People are weird. There's too many adults who are into shit like tarot cards. Has anybody noticed that? <laughs> Especially in this town, man. One week I had three different people uh, offer to do a reading for me, and I like I couldn't be rude to everybody, so I was just like, nah, I'm more of a magic eight ball guy myself. Sorry. <laughs> I had a friend ask me to do an escape room. All I heard was, "You want to pretend to be kidnapped for a few hours?" <laughs> like, that's right. I don't get it whenever anybody's like, "I don't do drama." Fuck you, yeah you do, we pay extra for that. How else do you explain things like professional sports? That's nothing but drama and heartache. <laughs> Especially for me, all my home teams suck. I don't want to be a sports fan anymore. Being a fan of a shitty home team, that's like being stuck in an old school Catholic marriage. <laughs> you get to know when you're too young, you don't really understand how the game's played yet, you just kind of pick one that's close to you that your parents like and you stick with it. <laughs> it's a hard year for me too, I'm an American soccer fan. We didn't qualify for the World Cup this year. That's why I'm against all of Trump's immigration policies. We need these kids. <laughs> I want to qualify for the next tournament, okay? Yeah, I don't know. It's too much heartbreak. Love of drama gives me a lot of uh, irrational fears because I saw too many horror films as a kid. Every time I go to my car, I always check the back seat because I think there's going to be a killer in there waiting to strike. That's stupid. There's never a killer in the back seat, but I still text and drive. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I feel scared of everything all the time. Like, I'm terrified of spiders. Is anybody here scared of spiders? Woo. Yeah, they're fucking, they're gross, man. And there's a whole bunch of them in the bushes around my front porch, which is a bummer because that's where I like to go to smoke weed. <laughs> it's making me paranoid. So what I've decided to do, I'm going to blow the smoke into the webs. <laughs> I think if I get them high, they'll be my friends now. It'll be like a Charlotte's Web kind of scenario. I come out the next day, written in web above my door, it just says, one chill dude. <laughs> Far out, man. This is going to be cool. Um, it's better than my old place, though. I used to live in a place that had roaches. They're the worst. That's not an infestation. That's like a movement in your own apartment. We used to call them the Viet Cong because they had tunnels all through the walls. And we, we bug bombed, so we said we were fighting a counterinsurgency campaign in our own apartment. <laughs> now that I don't live there anymore, though, I realize how like Vietnam it actually was. When I was there, I killed thousands of them. I did a lot of drugs. I started hooking up with an Asian woman. Didn't really accomplish anything, and after a few years, I just kind of left. <laughs> <laughs> At a very real scare, uh, not too long ago, my, uh, my girlfriend who I live with got sick one night, so I take her to urgent care in the middle of the night, and uh, one of the tests they had her do was a pregnancy test. So I was like, okay. She does the test, the nurse goes away, she comes back a little while later with the results, and she walks in and says, did you want positive or negative? Who <laughs> 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 act like context clues. If we're at urgent care at midnight on a Tuesday and I asked you how much the trip is going to cost, you should know what result we're hopeful for. <laughs> Come on. I don't know. I love my girlfriend very much. We've been together a few years now and uh, it's like she's awesome but she can totally destroy me without having to try. <laughs> it's like one day we were bickering about something and I was leaving the house and I said something smart as I was leaving and she yells back, you're going to get a lot of passive aggressive texts later. <laughs> <laughs> I misheard her. I thought she said passive aggressive sex. <laughs> which to me is way worse because not, like, nothing would 
just ruin my day faster than like being in bed with her, think I'm doing a good job, and I get down in her ear and I say something stupid like, "Oh yeah, do you like that?" And she goes, "It's fine." <laughs> <laughs> Weird. I read. Uh, I actually read an article uh, about um, astronauts up on the International Space Station, and they said they've had like married couples who are astronauts on the space station at the same time. And uh, people in the press have asked, like NASA, been like, "Hey, has anybody you know had sex in orbit?" And they get all coy about it. They won't confirm or deny it because <laughs> apparently, what happens on the space station stays on the space station. <laughs> <laughs> But I've been uh, with my girlfriend a few years now, and I actually got embarrassed the other day because a friend of mine was like, so like, when's, when's you guys like anniversary? And I was like, I don't know, we didn't really have like a firm start date. And uh, they were like, oh, you don't know how long you guys have been together? And I was like, we've been together, I'll, t I'll give you an idea. When we shower together, we both pee in the shower. That's how long we've been <laughs> And to me, that's true love, you know? <laughs> when you can sit there in the shower and they can just make eye contact with you like they're the quarterback in a huddle. <laughs> just both of you peeing down the drain, <laughs> talking about bills you gotta pay that week and shit. It was weird, because one time, too, one time, too, we just, we did that, and then like, as I was rinsing off, I spit down the drain, and she goes, ew, gross. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, did you see what we just did? And I was like, you keep moving the line. That's confusing. I can't do that. Oh, jeez. I don't know, man. It's better when I, like, how I used to live. When I first moved to L.A., I kind of jumped head first into, like, the deep end of the weirdness. I, for a while, I was the uh, side guy to a woman in an open relationship for a minute. And it was like, some people were like, oh, that's really cool and progressive. It was weird. I didn't like it. It was like being the backup quarterback. You know, like I got in the game from time to time, but I wasn't the face of the franchise. <laughs> I didn't make the team photo on the Christmas cards. So. I don't know. She's pretty great, though. She recently, she's, uh, she's um, Asian. I'm very clearly white. And she recently confided in me that she's only ever by choice dated white guys. And I was like, that's like kind of weird to have one preference that you stick with. And But then like, I thought about it as like a dorky white dude. It's kind of nice being somebody else's fetish for a change. <laughs> <laughs> Come objectify me. <laughs> Let's go. This was actually, uh, now my original dream uh, when I was a kid Raise your hand if I raise your hand. Show. <laughs> raise your hand. I'm only calling on you if you raise your hand. Now clap it up. Did anybody else here when they were a kid have dreams of being like any kind of professional athlete? Ooh. I did too. I, I but my thing was I wanted to be a professional soccer player, and I thought I could do it until I got to high school, where coach never played me. I sat the bench until my senior season, which was in the fall of the year 2002 in the state of Maryland. The same time, two asshole serial killers known as the DC Snipers were running around killing people with an assault rifle. <laughs> so Coach basically waited for like the one point in our state's history when nobody wanted to be on an open field. That's why he said, Young, warm up, you're getting in the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over there stretching, what position, Coach? All of them, you're going to be our only guy out there. <laughs> like, Are we sponsored by Target now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Before I go, I just want to say I'm sick of rude people. Yeah. People who are just <laughs> ungrateful and rude. I, I was at a party one time. I smoked weed, so I lit up a joint. I passed it to this guy who I like barely know, and he hits it and he goes, "It's really dry." Sorry, I gave you free weed, asshole. <laughs> It's really dry. Yeah, you're inhaling smoke. That's how this works. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs>